Hello, I'm back with another video and today's episode is about the founding member of the Supremes, Florence Ballard. Florence was the first member to be kicked out of the group she created due to jealousy and greed. Florence's legacy has lived until this day and people still love and admire this woman. Her story was sort of told through Dreamgirls and Jennifer Hudson during her Oscar speech gave her credit. But before I go any further, please make sure to share this video, subscribe and comment below and if you like this video, give a thumbs up. Disclaimer. I am not sure what is true or false in this video. I just find the information about a celebrity and make videos. This is not a biography channel, and it is just for entertainment purposes only. Please do not take any information from this video as factual. Thanks. Florence Glenda Ballard was born in Detroit, Michigan on June 30, 1943. Her parents were Jesse Lambert and Lurleigh E. Wilson. Jesse was adopted when his grandmother died and a Ballard family who knew him adopted him. He left his adopted family at age 13 and had an affair with Lurley, who was 14. During the Great Migration, Jesse and Lurley moved the family to Detroit and they had Florence. She became the ninth of 15 children. Jesse worked at General Motor to feed the family and Jesse also taught Florence music at an early age, which sparked her interest in singing. The Ballard family struggled financially and they would often move from different neighborhoods in Detroit. At age 15, Florence's family settled at the Brewster Douglas Housing Projects and she also lost her father to cancer the following year. The Ballard family struggled to put food on the table, and they couldn't afford clothes or take the children to places. They also didn't have toys or bikes to play with, and they would often use others. Music and family were all Florence had. While in high school, she met Mary Wilson, and they both were at a talent show. Mary was impressed with Florence's vocal ability. Mary said that Florence's voice was this operatic, soulful, and raw sound. She was also discovered by Milton Jenkins, who was the manager of the Primes and wanted to create a female group called the Primettes. The Primes consist of Eddie Kendricks and Paul Williams. Florence asked Mary to join and later Diana Ross and Betty McGlone joined. They became the Primettes and started to perform at sock hops and jubilees for a year. They were introduced to Barry Gordy but thought that they were too young, and they needed to finish high school. Florence, after auditioning for Barry Gordy, stated that if he is such a great producer, how come he couldn't see how great we are? Florence was at a sock hop with his brother and they were separated. A 17-year-old Florence offered a ride home from Reggie Harding and Reggie assaulted her at an empty parking lot. This really traumatized her and felt like he had stolen from her. She went into a deep depression and didn't talk to anyone or come out for weeks. Mary and Diana started to worry and a week later told the girls what had happened to her. The girls felt sympathetic but really didn't understand what she was going through. The girls thought she was going to be fine and be back to being the sassy, strong-willed, and unflappable person she was before. The girls would often hang out at Motown just to hang out, or help sing backup for other singers such as Mary Wells, Marvin Gaye, and many others. Florence saw Gordy as a father figure at the beginning because she believed at first that she was going to be rich and famous, and she would live in a beautiful house with her family. Florence never saw the big picture and the dark side of show business. Mary and Diane graduated high school and Florence did not. When the girls were old enough, they were given a chance to sign a record deal with Motown. They released songs such as After All, I Want a Guy and Buttered Popcorn. The group were not having much success at the pop chart and Gordy suggested that they change their name. Florence picked the name, The Supremes, but their problem was that they needed a hit. So, Motown brought in Holland Dozier Holland and wrote songs such as Baby Love and Where'd Our Love Go. They went from no hit Supremes to megastars. Diana as the lead singer Florence and Mary were pushed to the background. However, Florence did sing lead on other songs on certain albums. They also started to perform at Copacabana and followed superstars like Ella Fitzgerald, Lena Horne, Sammy Davis Jr., Sam Cooke, and Nat King Cole. Tension began to grow when Florence's solo people was performed by Diana. Allegedly, Florence was not feeling well, so she asked Diana to sing it for her. And the song became Diana's and Florence was not allowed to sing it anymore. Barry made Diana the lead because she had more commercial appeal and Florence did not. Barry believes that Diana would make her more money. What really led to Florence's downfall from the group was the operation of Motown. Motown had standards that the girls had to follow. They were also on the road a lot and Florence wanted to be with her family. There was also pay disparity within the group. Diana got paid more than Mary and Florence. Diana would often make remarks at Florence's weight. They would have separate hotel rooms. They would also ride in different limousines. She also felt that the group was drifting apart because Barry wanted to make Diana a star. Even though Florence thought it was a good idea that Diana sleeps with Barry because then they would get better deals. Florence started to feel resentment toward Gordy because she felt that he had cheapened the group's sound from R&B music to pop music. Florence turned to alcohol to numb the pain. 
When Florence was drunk one time, she got into a physical altercation with Diana because she thought that she was hiding her earrings. Florence began to have odd behaviors such as not coming to shows or recordings. She would be replaced often by other singers to fill her spot. Barry would punish Florence by temporarily suspending her. She would often be replaced by Marlene Burrow and then Cindy Birdsong. After her leave of absence was over, she was drunk performing with the Supremes, stuck her stomach out to the crowd. And this angered Barry Gordy and she was fired and permanently replaced by Cindy Birdsong. Florence Ballard sued Motown for settling for $160,000. Barry purposely tried to destroy her career. When Florence was at ABC Records, allegedly received a phone call from Barry Gordy not to write any song for Florence. She'd also got into another physical altercation with Diana at Barry Gordy's mansion. Diana was making stippy comments that pissed off Florence. Florence met and fell in love with Thomas Chapman at Motown. Chapman was a chauffeur for Barry Gordy and who was dating Florence at the time. After her departure from Motown, Chapman stayed with Florence and used the settlement money to buy a house in Detroit. It also used the money to start Chapman Management Agency Company and the agency was led by Ballard's attorney who helped her win her case with Motown. The attorney was facing embezzlement and Ballard fired him. Ballard was also dropped from ABC Record after two unsuccessful singles. Ballard's marriage was not healthy and Chapman would often beat her. Chapman would often leave Florence with their three children, Lisa, Michelle and Nicole Chapman, when they got into an argument. In January 1975, Florence was poor and living on welfare. She was 31 years old with three children to feed. Diana Ross wrote a $50,000 check for her to save her house, but her husband wanted the check for himself. She believed that she was going to make a comeback like Richard Nixon and make a comeback in the music industry. Florence was offered a job at a nursery school, and they offered her $80 per week, and she turned it down. Florence's dream was to be a singer and she didn't want her children to live on welfare. Florence's alcoholism got so bad that she was drunk and kidnapped, but she was able to escape her captors. Her captors wanted to rape her and use her for ransom, but then realized that she was the supreme that didn't worth much. She also began to have suicidal ideation, but her children kept her going. Florence Ballard tried to sue Motown again but failed. However, she received a settlement money from her attorney that tried to embezzle her. She used that money to buy a home for her and her family and reconcile with Chapman. Florence began to start a music comeback and then tragedy struck. Florence Ballard passed away from cardiac arrest and she was only 32 years old. During her funeral, Diana Ross got all the attention. Photographers were more interested in taking pictures of Diana. Diana also made a huge scene at the funeral, crying and hugging Florence children. However, Diana did leave money for Florence children to have when they got older. Apparently, the money was gone and they never received or seen the money. Florence had an open casket and people noticed the bruises on her legs. According to Florence's sister, Maxine Ballard claimed that Florence was murdered. Apparently, it was Florence's daughter Nicole who found her dead body on the floor, foaming at the mouth. Maxine stated that she never had a history of heart disease, and that when they examined the body, they didn't find any alcohol or barbiturates in her body. However, they did find this brown cereal substance that they couldn't identify what it is. Maxine said that she had confronted the man who wanted her death, and she said the man did this because she wanted to silence her. Florence had tape recordings stating her fear of Motown, and the consequences that would come if she sued them. So guys, in the comments, tell me who you think could have wanted to silence Florence, do you think it was Barry Gordy or was it her husband, Thomas Chapman? I am a true fan of Florence Ballard. I always liked the way she sang, and I really thought she was going to be the star of the Supremes. Rest in peace, Blondie. Alright guys, please don't forget to like this video by giving me a thumbs up, share this video, subscribe, and leave a comment. Bye.